I know one of my kids. Hello, hello. Uh, my name is Joe, Joe Scarpolino. Uh, if you can't remember Scarpolino, there's two L's there. It's okay. Uh, Smoking Joe is my moniker, my stage name, and uh, a little bit about myself. I have a business. My business, small business is called Get Down Enterprises. Uh, it's a boutique production company. I do. I run a festival called Galactic Get Down. I have promotional material as well, and then uh, a few other events. I do booking and management for myself and a few other bands. I have a couple business partners that help me with the booking and management of their bands, um, events at venues, different festivals, Soda Sound, Rivertown Days and Hastings, uh, all sorts of stuff I help book and, and run. I do graphic design, and I kind of will include that in my pet song thing later, if that sounds interesting. And then uh, tour management, now that touring's back, I hop in the van with various bands and run their tour, make sure that they get paid and have food and don't murder each other. Uh, and then song commissions is a big thing I'll talk about. Uh, getting song orders and then recording and writing at the same time and then for people specifically, and they pay for the song. So to record at home, this is my desk, essentially. Um, I guess the most, I didn't put it on here, the most important part is the brain, which is the computer. I was just saying I have a Mac, MacBook Pro, pretty standard. An interface, there are a million choices, but I'm kind of, what I wanted to do today was explain how to do it for as accessible as possible, like the least amount of money you have to spend to have recording studio at home. So this interface, the Behringer interface, it has two channels, uh, and then it is about, well, I think it's 40, 50, 40 to 50 bucks for this thing. And basically it allows your instruments to talk to the computer. So just running through the computer, you can hear the guitar. And, and if I wanted to, I can change sound and now it's a clean guitar it's all in within the computer let's see MIDI controller this is not a fancy MIDI controller I think this is maybe a hundred dollars but they're like really fancy ones with buttons and drum pads and stuff and all that but this is pretty much every instrument you can find on the internet I mean you can play drums play strings you can play synthesis it's everything it's literally whatever you want um, and we'll go into that when we get to the. And uh, really, it's all controlled here. These, I think, used to do things, but they do not anymore. Let's see. Oh, guitar based instrument goes right here. And then this also, take this out. Plug the microphone in, same works for a microphone, I have the microphone and a quarter inch, so it's XLR and quarter inch right here. And then later, or, you know, when we're all, if I get done in time, we're all going to make a song at the end here, because I'll show you, it's not, it's super, super fun, and uh, you'll see it's kind of how it works, but uh, you can come and look at the stuff. Microphones. I recorded my whole album, my new album I wrote, my pandemic album, as, you know, I think a lot of folks have using a 57 microphone, this bass, that mini controller, that guitar, laptop, that's it. 100%, I was in my apartment in the corner, and that's all I did, and I recorded the whole album. Um, so the, later on, I got condenser microphone, you see in like studios. It's a little bit fancier, sounds better, but you know, if you're in an apartment in Uptown, uh, the dynamic microphone cuts out a lot of the outside noise anyway, so. I didn't have to worry about trucks going by or tanks or whatever was going on. Um, let's see. Speakers, I made, I guess this came afterwards, but I made both, most of it on headphones. Plug them there. I'm sure you all know headphones. But uh, eventually I got bigger speakers and I have even better speakers at home I didn't bring, but this. Pretty much any speaker will work. I use laptop speakers too, like computer speakers. You can do that. Anything at all. And monitors. I didn't bring my monitor, thank goodness, but that is the representation. I have like another smaller monitor. You know, you don't need two. I just got an extra one recently. I did it all on one before. All right. 
let's see. So that's all the stuff, and that's really all you need. And I can show you an example of like how I play live. I would. These are all mixed tracks. I won't play the whole song by any means. Um, but you can kind of see. Ooh, let's do. Yeah. One where I have to switch between things. This is the title track on my new album, and then this is kind of an example of how to use it for performance or just practicing at home. PC, do you use a PC? Anybody use a PC? Do you need a Mac? Well, good. That's what we're talking about. Um, I guess, has anybody made music, produced produce music? Yeah, I figured. Cool. What do you use? Uh, Mac. Mac. And what stuff do you use? I have Logic. That's what I use right now. And Ableton's like the industry standard for electronic music, but Logic for me. It's more intuitive as an instrumentalist, I guess. Because, like, look at this crazy stuff. Hold on. You go in here. It's like the amps look like amps. <laughs> so, like, if you don't know anything about anything, like, you're like, this, I understand this. You know? There's the orange. And it's all, you know, and you can like grab the microphones. It's an endless amount of choices. I think that's the hardest part. You know, you can even move it around. It's pretty wild. Um, but Ableton's really great. I mean, it's, uh, it's you know, there's a lot of sound design in that that I can't really do in this. Um, and then, of course, like for recording in a studio, things like Pro Tools are more, more popular. Um, I just use Logic because I started my album and doing song commissions with GarageBand because it was free. And I, you know, was locked in my apartment, as we all were. Um, let's see. I guess the only requirement for computers is that it's newer than 2010. I don't really know much about computers, I guess. Uh, and then a thing that I use a lot for song commissions is a file converter, which is this thing. Um, if you want to change things from MP4s to MP3s, change videos, download videos, or like samples from the internet, I got a little mermaid <laughs> sample that I was using earlier. Um, I had a friend that had a line about Ursula, so I grabbed a little quote, threw it in the song. Which is pretty cool. All right. Any, anything so far? Yes. Yeah. Everything makes sense? It yeah. feels like initial, like the orange. Yeah. Might call it. Does that come with Logic Pro, or is that like it does? On the it does. Yeah. Okay. I don't have anything added except for like loops and samples and stuff. But all like the plugins that they have, there's just it's massive. Okay. So like all the amps, I mean, it's like hundred, it's like you know, two dozen amps, and then and, and then pedal board. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So all that stuff, and then also, I mean, a lot of this, a lot of this is in GarageBand for free. So, I mean, it's kind of, you know, it's really great how accessible they've made it. Um, so you can bass amps, and then you can get into drums, you can turn it into, they go by genre, you kind of see here. So if I just want, and this is kind of getting into the song commissions, I use these preset drums, but they're so, programmable. I mean, you can play them too. I mean, you want, but, you know, it's like, I want, oh, it's, it needs to be more simple. Let's turn it down. It needs to be twice a bit. It's just massive. 
massive amounts of choices. Don't like that drum set? Grab a different one. Don't like that kick drum? Grab a different one. It's really, I mean, what it took for me was a lot of time. You know, which I, which at the at the time I had, um, and then just kind of being very forgiving with yourself in terms of making choices, because you know, unless you released it, who cares? Like, just pick something and do it. See how it sounds. Oh, headphones, cables. I didn't finish my hardware. Uh, let's see, quarter-inch cables, US, USB-C, which is like these little guys, this and like this. What I'm talking about? Yeah. Pretty standard. <laughs> Uh, external hard drives, two terabytes, what I have, this is 2020, 2020, 2020, 2021, 2020, 21, 22. Speakers, monitors, cool. Pro Tools, Watershare, recording, using software, audio, oh, I already started that. So yeah. And then you get into two tracks you can make, or three, I guess. There's the audio track, which is instruments going through your interface. There's software instrument track, which is your MIDI. And this is, and all this comes with Logic. I think Logic's like 200 bucks right now. Something like that, maybe, maybe it's free. But it is some crazy stuff, like if you want to be a... Uh, just an endless amount of things. Oh yeah, you should pull up. This is a new song I was working on. Kind of show you like this is not a lot of tracks, honestly. Uh, I start with a lot of presets, I guess. You know, like I, I start with okay, the electric guitar. Right. You know. Go to the channel EQ, and I just like pick there's drums, keyboard, guitar, horns, all that stuff. Big guitar. I usually do it just says electric guitar, and I start there, and then I adjust as I need. You know, there's a lot of different options for like different frequencies. The electric guitar has like a lot of highs. But if it's more of a metal guitar, you do like the push and pull guitar and it kind of cuts that off. Um, play it. I'll show you what it's peaking as needed. Important. Oh, drum loops and samples. I get all my free samples from Cymatics.com. It also just is tons of Apple loops. I mean, just an endless amount. By instrument, percussion. Uh, or if you need electric guitar, you don't have to play anything. Just go. It'll tell you what key it's in, so you can grab stuff all in B minor and make a B minor song out of whatever. Limiter, yep. Limiter. Uh, I honestly was not a trained engineer, I guess. So a lot of this for me was just finding the way I liked it to sound. 
on my own. So I mean, I don't have a lot of that technical knowledge. I didn't want to go to school per se, but um, yeah, I'll show you the amp code with effects, tons and tons of effects. It's kind of ridiculous. You can change pitches, you can limit, compress, expand, filter, amps, bass amps, pedal board, delay, distortion. Oh man, five different kinds of EQs, depending on how you want to do it. You can point the sound in different directions. You can like mix it just for headphones so it like sounds like it's going around. All sorts of great stuff. They got subs. It's just wild. And we'll kind of mess around with stuff when we like get to the actual writing part. Um, subs were a challenge because I didn't have any. I heard my subs on my song from a speaker for the first time like a year after I recorded it, I think. It was pretty wild. And then mastering, I use for my song commissions, I use free mastering uh, online. BandLab is what I use, bandlab.com. You just plug it in, they have different options, and you can just pick your master. Um, and then Lander is another good example. I mean, obviously, for my album, I went to a mastering guy, uh, mastering human. Uh, but in terms of once you get to the songwriting part, if you have to do it fast and it's not going to be released like to the radio or it's something like that, if it's just a song for a person to have about their pet or themselves or their friends or whatever, I feel like it's worthwhile, depending on the price range, too. So, now... In doing all this, one fateful day, a friend heard me play a song I wrote about my cat when I was like 10. And uh, they're like, we write a song about my cat. And I, uh, I was like, sure, uh, 20 bucks. And then now it's 100 bucks for a pet song. And it's two minutes long. And I've done 31 of them. And I, made, I have an album where it's just I let them pick a genre, and they tell me about their pet, they send me a picture of their pet, and then I check out a new song. Oh yeah. So like this person really liked, you know, they wanted the funky, funky song, and this person just wanted it to be like a vibe. I don't know, it's like I can't remember what they said, soft, electronic. For that song itself, I have hold up. So it's a song about cats, dogs, one hedgehog, uh, that sort of thing. And in doing this, it's just a lot of practice uh, producing music. And that led to me applying for Songfinch. Songfinch.com is how, who I work for. They send me song orders. Oh, yeah. And I got one at 10. I'm going to show you. We'll do the whole thing together, which is actually extraordinarily convenient. Oh, no. So this is the thing, they uh they do all the client they talk to all the clients, you know, you go in as a you know, and you start ordering a song and you pick uh genre and you pick you know the tempo and I kind of show you. Oh I have two, I guess. So here you go. They say when it's due the seventh, so I have three days to write this song. Uh it's hundred bucks. They want it to be rock, sung by a man. They want. They found out that I like to write funny songs, so I do a lot of comical things. Happy, tempo, medium. The gifter is from the best family ever to dad. Oh, it's Father's Day season, so it's two, It's a Father's Day song. Daddy David. And they uh, they say there are three things. 
that they must have. And this is kind of works for the pet songs too. It's like a method of, of ordering. You know, you say, well, what do I have to put in the song? For sure, give me three things. And then tell me all about your life. So overall, it's a catchy beat and it's funny and includes how he puts us first. Kids' names are Parker, always know the kids. Riley, something about the mom, best dad ever. <laughs> We'd be lost without him, but you can't find a thing. That's funny. Um, and then all about stuff to fill in the song. They could see the world together, getting slurpees. People often put like vacations they went on, first kiss stories. And honestly, doing this and pet song work and just song commissions in general, when people order this stuff, they're ordering it for people they love. They're ordering it about something they love, generally speaking. It's a really great window into the world and be like, these people, I get to learn about love stories, people's cool dogs and like the crazy things they did. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's their worst gigs. I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. So that's the order. You know what? I'm going to accept it. I have not rejected one ever. Um, but I'll pull up one that I have done, that is done. I'm going to accept that one too. So this is my two in progress now. Submitted one that hasn't been approved yet. And then these are all completed. And I'm going to. That was a weird word. I don't know. It's kind of tough to pick. I wrote a song about like a couple that is really raunchy and a song uh, about that was very, very heavy, heavy, heavily religious in the same day. So you, you know, you just kind of like adapt. Like it was like I was singing about these people's sex life and then I was singing about this like mother and son loving Jesus. It was very odd, but uh, you know, it's what you do. I wrote a song for a stripper to strip to. She wanted her own personal stripping song. So it's all like, this is that. Of the night, somebody really liked Steel Panther for like a cheesy, cheesy metal, like kind of like throwback band. And uh, they liked this song so much, they printed it on like a guitar, like the lyrics I wrote for these people. And it's wild. But I'd write about Scooby, rock concert, Steel Panther. Oh, you know, I actually had this really good job. Oh, here it is. There we go. This is my process. I, I, uh, I copy all the information into my, my notes. Rock concert, Steel Panther, all this stuff, stories and memories, best mom ever. April is an escrow officer, loves cruising, loves heavy metal, uh, looking to become a grandma. Her dog Scooby is her life, rock cruises, rock concerts, walking Scooby, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here are the lyrics. So you kind of get, okay, I have to talk about Scooby, her dog. She loves streaking through the quad. I don't know. I've never streaked through a quad, but here's what I did. We're going to be street. <laughs> Just like normal place festivals. <laughs> I just listened to like a couple of steel pants or something. And the mix isn't perfect. You know, like I would sit there, I could sit there for days and mess with it. But, good enough. <laughs> I 
There's some weird stuff. They don't give you content. There is a there is one where they just had got stabbed to a chair and in parentheses, don't worry. I, and I don't get to talk to the clients, so somewhere in the song I had to put got stabbed to a chair. How do you how do you put that in? I think patiently. So Oh yeah. So if you were to want to where is this coming from? There we go. If you if you want to apply to Soundfinch, um they, they have like four different examples. Well you send them examples of your work and then you have like an audition tape kinda. Um you do a verse and a chorus and then they say yes or no. Um but there are lots of places like Songfinch. There's like four or five different websites. Um, depending on what you do, you know, this is kind of more, this is very lyric driven uh, and it's very fast. There are little, like production ones. There's ones for, uh, you know, like recording certain instruments, depending on what you do, or if you just write lyrics, there's that too. I don't know all the websites offhand, but this is a, like a, a new thing uh, because of the, the golden age of music production where you can literally just have, like, I just brought this here, but you're going to record a song. I mean, you don't have to have a studio. Obviously, the studios are great. I don't want to, you know, say they're not, but have, being able to utilize this and write songs personally and record as you write them um, just opens up a whole new business, industry, kind of. You know, like the weekend, the artist just dumped a bunch of money into song pitch because people are. And then you go here and you can look. Uh, where is it? Hey. Uh, I just want to go to like the normal part. There we go. Okay, so let's say we wanted to order a song. They're going to bother me a, a bunch after this, but. <laughs> Gifter's name. Let's see what I mean. And then C, that's us. We're giving it to ourselves. You want their name in the song? Yeah, I do. How's their name sound? M M C. What's the occasion? <laughs> uh, this is just an example. No, we don't talk about it. How should it make them feel? Have happy, lighthearted, somber. I have not gotten a somber. I guess maybe somber is not the not the vibe. Do you have any song for the artist in mind? Yes, me. <laughs> and uh, you know, a lot of my orders, you know, come from random, but like there are people that I know that do order songs as well. And it goes on. Then you talk about. I don't want to go through all this. All this. I don't want to have time to write the song. All right. Have I missed any steps here? And then you send it in, and you never know if they like it necessarily. I mean, they, they can send back edits, but they have to pay for them. So if they like it enough, I just not, I, I never hear from them. With the pet songs, though, I, I'm always nervous they're not going to like it, and they always do. So it's about their pet. It's like fish in a barrel. You know, it's like, what do you like? And we write a song about it. So this is what we're going to do. Need a template. And we're gonna make a song. All right, now, no pressure. What genre? Genre, genre, genre. Anybody have a preferred genre for today? Blues, rock, electronic? Funk. Funk? Good. good. That's a good one. So we go to drums. Okay, rock, we'll do funk rock, there we go. It just has it. You know, it's like... it's a little faster. Everybody play guitar? Let's see if we can do it all together. And it clicks you out. Oh, you have to highlight the right track, though. You can arm the track, but if you don't, you just start to start. Recording.
is I've got Greg. Arpeggiators are good. Like if it sounds like it's just a computer making noise, it probably is. Pretty much all of it in terms of like the actual, and then I could just kind of get into details if you have any questions or anything you, I have that you don't know that you want to know. Yeah. I'm just curious on the uh, like the song requests. Yeah. Like for you, uh, what is like a typical turnaround? Um, generally speaking, for Songfinch, they give you a due date, so it's. And three to five days okay. for that. And then for pet songs, because they're generally fans or people I know, I do like two weeks. Gotcha. And with the pet songs, I guess I can hop on my YouTube, but I, uh, I do graphic design for it too. Oh, yeah. This one was about a cat named Freddie Mercury. So like they go, you know, I mean, like it's just so they could show people. Yeah. That was like. 
how if you were to show people who just have an MP3 of it, so I put on YouTube. That's their cat. It's ready for a drink. So with the graphics and stuff, like I, I a little bit wrong here. They want to punch too. Scratching at the door. No, he will not let us sleep. But oh, no, I'm never gonna let you go. And I'm gonna make sure you know. Yeah, so and then and then I guess I have done for actually for Drea right there. I did a song, one of my first um, custom songs that wasn't a silly pet song. It was a song for her father. And uh, and you know, we it was a much more intensive process. Like we would go back and forth. Um, you know, I would write it and she like, well, that's kind of right, but it's more like this, you know, we like would work through. And that was, I mean, that cost a bit more because there's more time, but I like that. Like if someone's going to present, you know, a song that's very meaningful, like I like to sit down and like, get to know them a bit and learn about what we're doing. Um, so that turnaround was longer, I guess. And the more editing, the longer it takes. I'm pretty bad about charging a lot more, but I charge a little bit more. Um, and I think... It seems impossible, and hundred dollars isn't a lot from Songfinch. You know what I mean? So you don't want to spend more than four or five, six hours on something, because then you're like, if you do the hourly after ten hours, you're like, well, it's getting bad, you know? Yeah. Um, let me pull up a recent one. Oh yeah. So I wrote this is one of the weirdest ones I got. It was they wanted a song. It was for their like girlfriend or, or boyfriend, but uh, it was just they wanted it to be about Jurassic Park. <laughs> Uh, and so I did, uh, I don't want to lose it, but drums, bass, two guitars, and then a solo guitar, and then some vocals, okay. And I originally did this. <laughs> Because, you know, Jurassic Park, right? Songfinch got back to me and said, hey, dude, you absolutely can't do that. <laughs> like, I'm so sorry, but you got to take, like, it was in the vocal line, it was in the guitar line. I was like, but it's not exactly the same. Like, it's close. It's probably not even the same key, but. Was it John Williams? Did it? I can't remember who did it. One of those famous ones. I don't want to make it bad. So I just had to change the vocal line. That's why I didn't come here yet. So I had to redo all this. So then I was like, okay, fine. You can see, like right here, like I played the solo, but I just cut to me like this. I watched an interview with Billy Eilish with David Letterman on Netflix recently, and they do this a ton, where they like use 80 different takes to make one vocal line. You can't tell. And it's like, it's, they use this, and it's kind of wild because there's a, there's a recording studio kind of integrity where they want to get things done in one take, but more and more with the technology, uh, people just want it to be perfect. So, it's pretty wild. And this is kind of a minimal amount of tracks. Uh, gotta be one where I have it. <laughs> oh yeah, something about the lobsters left the ocean? I don't know. I don't ask questions. Like, what do you mean? I guess I'll put it in there. Yeah, somebody said this lady, like, green glass from Vermont. I had to put that in the song. What? <laughs> Um, a lot of looping going on, you know, and to save time, uh, if I get a chorus right once, it's copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, you know, because like, if it were more than $100, then I would definitely do it a bunch more, but this is synthesizers, what was this one? This is an arpeggio. This is, this is. So I'm playing chords, and it does 
In the frequency, in the frequency, you know, so it's like, so you're EQing, yeah, you're like, so, so, like, you know, if you have you're EQing it and panning it so that, and if ever you have two low frequencies that are hitting the same point, like your kick drum and your bass, your kick drum will disappear if you have your bass in the frequency exactly. So you have to, like, or if you have to, like, chain that into. It can get, I don't know the, the language necessarily as well as I should, um, but you have to connect them to the same bus, which is like your effects that you can put on. It's pretty wild. So, and when I actually started recording, it was in a youth center in my hometown of Iowa City, Iowa, and it was on tape. So, like, I'd come a long way. You know, it was free, so I was very fortunate in that. But, um, yeah, and then I can show you, maybe even, I'm kind of just showing you stuff now. So I really keep going, but if, if yeah. you have your own amp that you want to use, mm -hmm. I mean, what do you, if you, when you set up? Oh, uh, then you would, if you want to use your, or, oh, like for the guitar? Yeah, yeah, so say I, I don't want to use one of the amps for that. Sure. Just like my Marshall at home or something yep. like that. How would you? Then you would just uh, do it uh, like you would a vocal mic. You take your condenser All right, right yeah. here, and then this and here, and then that's yeah. it. Okay. Uh, and then you know a lot of times uh, it is a good way to go, especially if you have dialed in your tone. You know what I mean? Like over the right. over a long period of time, then you don't even have to mess with the the plugins. I think that you know with the plugins, and it's mostly to be. Chameleon-like with genres, you know what I mean? Like if you are a certain type of musician, you have something figured out for your style, then that's what you want to use for your personal recording. But if you're doing songs for other people and they want, you know, a cheesy '80s guitar that I don't play, like I just find the cheesy '80s guitar setting and go or whatever, you know. Or they have you know funk basses, you know. They have uh, oh, I'll pull up a left track. So these are all the song pinch songs I've done. I'm on 27. Which seems like a lot, but you kind of get formulaic, you know, kind of some guitar solos are similar and songs. Um, I reuse phrases. And, oh, and also you can release the songs if you want. Like they don't own them. Um, very rarely would you ever want to use the lyrics because they're about someone's life. So like, unless you really identify with it, but like the music, if I wrote a song at the forum and I really liked the song, I could absolutely keep it, use it, release it. They can't do anything. It's like very, it's very chill like that. You know, they're very approachable to, it's not like a faceless thing. Kind of hard to get on the phone, but who isn't? What am I doing? There. There we go. Here is. Let's see. What else do I do? Oh, I use rhymezone.com a lot. Not because I don't know what rhymes with what, but because it saves time. Like it's just like what rhymes with hand? And you just like type it in. It's like look at everything that rhymes with hand. That'll work. And then you just like put it in. You know what I mean? So like I just uh, don't be afraid of it. Whoa, tools. That's good. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, electronic stuff. Oh god, this one. Trying to find like a really good example of producing your own beats, which is also really cool. Um, and addictive. 
I used to, I, I make beats as like a palate cleanser between songs. Like if I like want to just like get a song out of my head to write another song. I would say that's a good, good way to do it. Beats. Oh yeah. I don't know if this is actually house music, but it's close. This is fun. So, your digital drum thing. So you can go in to any noise that came around and load any audio file to be your kick. Literally anything. So I have like a smorgasbord of drum samples I downloaded. Preset it all, and you can sit there and go whatever. And it's all it's all customizable. If you want to do that, like if you're writing a song, it's not quick. I need some drums, so I think that's the hard. I don't record live drums, and I don't know how necessarily. I mean, I know how in theory, but I don't know the practice of it because I've always been recording in a small space. But that's kind of what this is all about, like being able to record anywhere you are with just kind of what you have. Mm -hmm. I didn't save our song, y'all. Okay. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. Show you some cool stuff. I made what I think is a really fun version of. I don't know what it is. Never mind. I mean, I recorded. I made a remix of a song from Encanto. You guys, your Encanto, the movie, Disney movie. Um, so if you know a song. Make a version. I don't know. What is your typical process for editing like vocal recordings? Okay. Yeah. Let's grab a book. That's good. That's good. That's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. no, not a It's really funny that you asked that because I started doing this, like I said, alone, and I just had my voice. And then a year later, like when I had people over to record, I realized I only knew how to mix my own voice. You know what I mean? Like I, I had my, my cellist and she recorded her vocals. I was like, I have no idea how to mix a female voice at all. So it was a whole like learning process. Um, I generally, let's isolate this. This is like your loopy bit. You just grab it, so like it will. You know, start with my friend Cassandra and that faithful night down on Santana. So if I were to just grab audio, start fresh with this track there. Use your option to voice. I do tracking vocal to start. There's a million choices, um, and then you have your de-esser, which. It, it's embarrassing how long it took me to figure out what it does. It takes the S's out. It's a D -esser. like So like your hard S doing that into a microphone, it'll like control that. 
I thought it was something else, but it's literally a DS. It's in the name. And it has different presets. Male vocals, female vocals. And then tons of different options here. But I find that the vocal ones aren't as good. Like it all started with our friend Cassandra and that fateful night down on Santana Row. Our very first kiss was right there, you know. You were working for the 49ers. I was in the ER pulling all nighters. Despite our busy occupation, we laid down a foundation. And soon, so little like, Paul and me, we met your great big family. We all fell in yeah. love instantly. I knew that you. But if you don't like that one. It all started with our friend Cassandra and that faithful night down on Santa. That's with a condenser microphone, so it's a little bit easier to mix. Um, the biggest thing you want to do when recording anything is the range that you're recording it in. You don't want it to be too quiet. You never want it to clip. It's better to be a little too quiet than to clip. Because if you have a great take and it clips, like it's like, it, you know, it's, it's awful because you get really mad. And you can tell by the little flat line here. It happens. You can see, like, I don't know. So, like, see right there? That's bad. <laughs> you don't want that. You want it to be down here. Um, so, is that ambient noise, or what? Or is that your vocal? Or you peaked on it, or what? Oh uh, yeah. So, like, uh, yeah. I just, I was too loud, and my, I had, I had my, you know, the volume on my interface turned up because you turn it up or down based on. And you can use like a, a board, like a, you know, if you have like a, a mixing board, you can use that as an interface all the time. But like if this is set too high and I'm recording and it's just clipping over and over, then it'll just sound grainy. It's hard to mix, you know, like you don't have that room in it. And you can start reading these waveforms. But at the same time, I'm not too picky about it uh, if if it's in a a very small part of the song commission, like of a song pitch especially. Or if it's a harmony and it's really low in the mix, like, but for my own album, I mean, spent hours and hours and hours recording, re-recording, and making sure that it, there was no, none of that. You don't use a limiter? I do. Uh, I, I use a limiter, uh, and the compressor, the compressor on each channel has its own limiter, um, which helps a lot. Um, but if you clip the gain, it just it just sounds bad. The limiter is fantastic. Um, and then at the end of everything, sort of like your own pre-mastering, I do an adaptive limiter, which it's incredible how it plays. It all do. started with our friend Cassandra and that faithful night down on Santana Row. How much you Our very first kiss was right there, you know. You were working everything. for the 49ers. I was in the ER holding all nighters. Despite our busy occupation, we laid down a foundation. And soon, little Paul and me, we met your great family. We all fell in love instantly. I knew that it was meant to be. And I think uh, I do use limiter, and I uh, you can EQ the entire thing, and I EQ everything. Um, a lot of these things, uh, if I don't know what they are, I don't know what they do. My advice is to open it, and then turn it all the way up, and then turn it all the way down, and then see what it does. Like things like weird stuff, like this multi effects, step effects. It's like kind of like a weird synth arpeggiator. Um, so you have ultimate control, which can be intimidating. You're like, what is all this stuff? You know? And like, honestly, I'm not always sure. I know that this is the beats, and you can connect them, so it goes da 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 But how does it work exactly? Like I said, I'm not trained. I just really enjoy doing this at home. But it's lame. It'll start somewhere. And then that's one of the weirder ones. And you got fat effects, which does different stuff. Let's say. It all started with our friend Cassandra and that faithful night down on Santana Road. 
Our very first kiss was right there, you know. You were working for the 49ers. Okay. I was in the ER for the ladders. Despite our busy occupations, we laid down the foundation. And soon, little Paul and me, we met your perfect family. <laughs> we all fell in love instantly. I knew that it was meant to be. Not a symptom of Hawaii to be. Not a symptom of Delaware Los Angeles. <laughs> from Philly to San Diego. I go wherever you and Cassandra and that faithful night down on San Diego. I like a Borg a little bit. The 49ers, I would. And then you can take that same thing. I think, uh, let me take that. Uh, let's go here. I really like doing it. They like. Mm -hmm. Where is it? This is just a fancier version of GarageBand, which is 100% free. And I started making money off of pet songs before I bought Logic, for sure. You know, so it's like, I mean, it's a, it's a nasty habit, I think, in art to wait till you have all the stuff to do it. You know, like, oh, I have to get the right this, I have to get the right that. You know what I mean? And I, I, I'm against that attitude. I mean, yeah, sometimes you need the gear and you want, like, you really want specific stuff, but... I think it's in the doing, it's in the trying. It's like really where it's like kind of magical. You know, there's this freedom to like write something and, and like as you're writing lyrics, you're, you're recording them. So it just loops around and you're just making up words. You can go back and pick out the things you like. You can play a guitar solo 20 times in a row in a loop and just like pick the parts. That's how I wrote guitar solos for my album and got better was I, I just noodled around, made that into a cohesive solo through editing and then learned that solo. You know, it's just like, and I couldn't play it when I wrote it, but I could learn how to play when I edited it. You know, it's like, I think it's just really being kind to yourself and just like using, you know, your tools and just like making sure that, you know, like it doesn't have to be right first time. It's, you can edit everything. You can take it out. And I'm actually, my friends do make fun of me. I'm like a guy that will add too many layers to things. And then I have to go back later and take out a lot of stuff, you know, like I just put in everything possible, you know? I think it's uh, I think it's just important to just kind of know that it's accessible, and you know it's really fun during the pandemic. I, for me, as a as an artist, I didn't know what to do. I'm a li I'm a live musician mostly, uh, but being able to record and write and then bounce what I was doing at the end of the day, about, I mean, like put turn it into an MP3. I can put put on my phone. And I can sit there. And I can listen to it. Like I did something. I wrote a song. I'm definitely still in hearts. You know, like even though I can't go out and play for anyone, it's like it's a it's a nice esteem builder, I guess. You know, because it's just for yourself. You know, and it's uh and it's something that you can definitely do. Uh, and if you don't have a MIDI controller, by the way, you can just go like this. I guess I need to pick like a MIDI track, but I don't have one. Oh, you can't do. But you can. On your keyboard. If you want. And uh, I look up YouTube videos sometimes, you know, if I want to know something specifically. And I'm always getting tips from producer friends that, you know, have been doing it longer. I often get made fun of for using Logic, but I don't care. The Ableton people, they like to tease. Um, yeah, and then I guess I wanted to like maybe play through an actual song and show you like when I'm actually done, what that is like. So I'm gonna find what it's like a lot. Because I keep starting and stopping, but I'll actually go through a whole one, whole song, clip song. 
because I'm pretty sure. Oh, <laughs> the, this is probably where the comedy started. The birth anniversary. Um, basically, uh, this woman bought the song for her husband, and or no, he bought it for her. Wait, I guess it was, yeah, Greg bought it for Laura. That's what it was. It's a birthday anniversary. They're close together, and she hates that. So he thought it'd be funny <laughs> to get a song about both. She gets grumpy if the two things get merged together. This song will be for both because I like fucking with them. <laughs> like, and that, to me, like that's just worth it. Like I'm helping this guy. Like, I mean, I love teasing my wife too. So it's like really fun. So I, I got the vibe immediately. She hates this, so this is what I'm doing. As long as it's not like actually going to make someone upset. That, but it's just funny. Um, and they make they, they have us send instrumentals uh, of the songs as well as with vocals. That's why that was all needed. But we will just run through that. I like to do accents. <laughs> oh, this is a British Mostly just, I 
and then making it accessible. That was all the whole goal of this, really, just to explain that you can do it. Anyone can do it. You know, if you can't play instruments, there's samples. You can put them together. You know, you don't have to be good at music to make music anymore. <laughs> it's a it's a wild world. Uh, let's see, another fun one. Uh, oh yeah, a company, a Jewish company bought somebody who was leaving their company that had founded it. Uh, they bought him a song and they had a term called bagel, where it's like when, since they're a Jewish company, when they're talking to other people in the world, like other businesses, especially, they'll always like say why they like, like their relationship to the Jewish culture. Like, you know, it's like, they're like, oh my, you know, my best friend growing up was Jewish, or I love kosher pickles, or, you know what I mean? Like, they always get that, and they'd be like, bagels. So, like, I had to, like, put that in a song. Like, and it's, it, which is kind of tricky, because you're dealing with, you know, not only a culture, but a religion. It's like, it's not mine. So, it's like, how do I tastefully make this joke that they've kind of explained to me? So, that was weird. But they liked it, I think. They didn't complain. Uh, that was a weird one. And I recorded that while I was on tour, for sure. It's like a sweet one. Oh, yeah. And, uh... I, I always thought they wouldn't accept this as rock music. But it's got sick of that. take the parts that I want to perform out, the guitar part I'm going to play and the vocals I'm going to sing, and I put them all in a handy dandy track, and then I line it up and I say, okay, I have an hour long set. There's the hour here. So, and it just starts. I just get play, and I play guitar kind of along with myself. And I sing. Uh, when I play live, I have four channels, two from that, left and right, and then the, my guitar amp and then uh, vocals. And that's how I've been touring. Because uh, it's not economical to have a band right now. At all. People don't need to know. There's not enough money. Like, you can't, you're splitting 200 bucks five ways. Yeah. But you guys know we're here. Hopefully, you know, get a little bit better idea of this kind of this emerging market of personal songwriting that usually just the way the technology is you can do. Um, Look. See, the track doesn't wait for you. See, you start with a garage band. I want to take you to kind of get 
get the salt and the food that's known in the last day. The transition of this would probably be fairly easy. It's super easy. It's yeah. exactly the same. Uh, except there's more bells and whistles. I think. Yeah. I think I, I wrote my first Garage Band song, you know, in March 2020, I think. And then by, I didn't buy Logic for maybe like eight months, but that was more of a, more of just me procrastinating, spending money. But I think I kind of, how long did it take? Oh, that's all right. I mean, that's I'd say it took me like, it took me, it took me, I, I would, I would make something good enough at first. And I think it took me like, you know, maybe like a, a dozen songs of just like putting together beats and guitar parts. And then I kind of understood what I was doing, but I never really like discredited those first like experimental songs. They're just really simple. So I would say, you know, I've only been doing this with this program like this for yeah, two years. But there's like, you know, 20 years of playing music. And I've always been a band person. I've loved electronic music, but I didn't have any process to make it. And it's been really fun to experiment with new genre. And, it, you know, it makes you appreciate it a bit more, like the production. I'm not a DJ. People call me a DJ all the time. Because I come in and I play along with the track, but it's like, I don't, it's a different thing. But I have this electronic rock. But it makes you appreciate, like, listening to electronic modern music. It's like, wow, like, I understand why this is cool now. Like, I get it. And sometimes, like, I understand why this is not good. You know, it's like, but in conclusion, as a songwriter or a musician or you know someone who has ideas and before they get away from you, you can record them. You know, even if it's not even to a drum track, you can just have like a blank thing, turn on the audio, press record, you can just play it and you won't forget. And it's better than playing into a phone. You can share the oh, that's the collaboration after. I mean, I didn't mention any of that, but the, the ability to collaborate with people. Like send them your track, they can add a part, you know, they can send you their file of what they did, you add it to your song. You don't have to be in the same room, you have to be in the same country. You just you can just send it over the internet. Like I've collaborated with many artists that way. Oh, I got a, a question. <laughs> I I am start starting to re energize the studio of the end of it's for video and audio, sure. uh, but primarily looking at music uh, for live recording. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have, uh, I just, I've been using a ta the Tascam uh, the digital the recording system. And now I've got the uh, uh, Behringer uh, X32. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Um, it's a nice one. Well, it is, but. I a lot to it. It's, uh, it's just o way over my head. Uh, and uh, it's pretty much a computer that's a board, right? Like it's pretty much like it's very the screen. Well, it has a little screen okay. and you can you can also have a control outface, uh, output it to a computer mm -hmm. like a laptop. Right. And then control all of the functions that way. Um, and then I, I, I also have the, the stage box with the digital snake to, mm. to connect it. And, uh, but I, uh, I don't know, I'm looking for some help as to how to yeah, utilize. Uh, yeah, to utilize like the, in the recording process. Yeah. The, I guess, you know, I, just, I do. The, I, the post I have a cook, I, I, I use Audition for my post. Sure. And that, that's pretty good. Yep. Um, yep, but but the is. recording uh, on that system just the, the overwhelmed. Yeah, and I mean it's like a full. Like if you were to record like a full band, maybe or like multiple yeah. people at a time. Yeah, that's still outside of what I know how to do. I think I think you can I think you can do it with this. But I've been doing one track at a time, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, personally. Um, but I think I think the best way to do that, if you don't want to mess with the computer parts, is figure. I mean, I get each channel can be programmed. Like this, set on right here as to which input it is. And if you had a 32 channel board, this should have 32 choices. You can set each one. 
and then you can record it all at once in theory. But I think it would be best to just use it as an interface and then not, you know, just so that and you control the rest in post, right? I think. I don't yeah. know. I guess I mm -hmm. have to look but, at it. The, the, yeah, but the and thing is that musicians it. often want their uh, monitor feeds uh, in the in the, you know they have to work with around the, the delay yeah. issue. And oh also, sure, the yeah, and, and also speed. they want to have some effects that they hear. They want to have verb for the vocals. Right. And sure. The, um, yeah, and that's like, I mean, that's, I mean, maybe next year I'll have another class. I'll get better recording other people, but like I've, I can record with one other person in my tiny office, closet, studio, room, um, and you know, even, even like having the right headphones, the headphone mix, like you're talking about, like that's a challenge. That's a whole other thing. You know, I think, I think my experience, I think for this purpose is just one person, um, or, or, you know, one person at a time. You know, I think that that, I mean, that's a great question because that's a whole different, I mean, that's a whole different level of recording, I think, that I don't necessarily know. Do you know anybody that? Oh, I know lots of people that do, yeah. Yeah. I, I can get you some references. That would be wonderful. Absolutely. Got one minute. But thanks for coming awesome, and listening. Yeah. I mean, it's really cool. You know, it's my first time trying to explain what I do in words. So it's really cool to kind of break it down. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully you can record some stuff for fun on your own. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to go to some classes too, or whatever this is seminars, lectures.